Okay, y'all. Today, we're gonna do kind of a unique project. We're gonna work on a dead head. First and foremost, if you find a dead deer, dead anything, I've had a few comments about it. If you find a deer, you need to call the Department of Fish and Wildlife or the DNR, whatever they call it in your state. Make sure you tell them that you found an animal, especially if it's a game animal. Last thing you want is to recover something like this, get all excited, and then get charged with some sort of poaching charge or whatever. So, I think this is a grandfather's attic type situation. Um, and it just didn't, I guess it just fell out of love. Nobody wanted it. And I said, can I use it for a film? So, I'm gonna show you a really unique way to deal with a deadhead and a cool way to mount one that's broke. You can see that whole front part of that beam is gone. So. First things first, the reason I'm doing this video is because I've got a lot of questions about what do I mean when I say rehydrate it. Essentially everything is dried and it's it's very, very difficult. It's like a, it's completely adhered. It's like you shrink wrapped it uh, and it's not coming off. So what you have to do is actually soak it. When you soak it, it is going to smell. There's plenty of brain and stuff that's in there. So when you hydrate it, it's going to make that tissue stinky again anyway it's gonna take a few days so I'm just gonna put this down in a bucket fill it with water I don't like to use any chemical and we'll visit it here in uh, five six days looking at our deer skull project this has been soaking now for five full days and it's just now starting to loosen up. So I'm gonna try and take off all this loose stuff without boiling. This thing stinks. There's no way around it, it just stinks. So I wanna be able to get it off first. If I can't get it broke free with just the washer, then I'll boil it. But I'm gonna try doing that because I don't know how brittle this is. I could tell within the first couple of seconds of washing that this thing wasn't just going to peel right off. So I went and got a knife and a pair of pliers and I peeled as much of the big fur stuff as I could get off. And then I dropped it in the boil for a few minutes to kind of break it a little more free and then washed it as clean as I could get it. Grabbing the screwdriver, I put it right in the ear canal popping out what I like to call the ear butt. Just a hunk of bone right there where the ear canal is. You gotta get that knock free to get it clean. So I'm not going too crazy with the cleaning because I am gonna cut this skull right in half, right down the middle. I just take what I call my toy sawzall and I just run it right down the seam of that head it's real easy, it's real mild, just let the blade do the work. And once I've got it in two pieces, then I can really work on cleaning up the side that I'm going to utilize. Here is a great visual look at the inside of a deer head. This is why I'm always saying you need to get all the nasal cavity, you got to get all that stuff out. You can see where the ear butt is how much tissue grows around that. You can see the shape of the brain hole and how much stuff gets collected in there. It's just a real good look at what we all fight as skull people trying to get them clean. So this is what the mechanics look like inside. This is what we got to get clean when the whole head is intact. So I'm going to finish up the cleaning with the power washer. Here we go. You ready? Every hole, every orifice, anywhere that there's tissue or meat or debris, put your power washer in there and wash it free. I'm going to boil that cleaned skull in 40% by volume liquid peroxide and water mix 50-50. So I'm wrapping the horns with tin foil and a little bit of tape to keep the peroxide from bleaching the base of the horn. Either way on this particular mount, I'm going to stain this entire horn. Something I don't talk about much, but 
you always want to make sure that your flame isn't coming up around your pot and going to burn your horn. I've had it happen in the past where the heat is really cranked up and I got a black burnt horn on one side. So if you're feeling excess heat, just lay a piece of tin foil on there. It'll keep you from burning up your horns. After your head's been in there for 10 minutes or so at a boil, I pull it right out, rinse it clean, and set it in the sun to dry. All right, let's look at the deer half project. Uh, this deadhead was uh, actually in pretty good shape, not, not as bad as I thought. And when I boiled it, I still had some coloration where I'm sure most of you still get typical coloration right in this heavy part of the, the, the crown of the head. So I left it in the pot, I went and did something, and when I came back, I'm like, ooh, man, that thing's white now, and I cooked it. I overcooked it, which I, I guess I just want to show you so you know that everybody makes mistakes. So when I talk about leaving a skull in the peroxide for too long where it'll etch it, this is what's happening. Because this is more of a novelty type thing, I'm not too excited about it. I would have never done that otherwise, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to mop and glow that and keep it from getting chalky. I'm going to mop and glow it real good and I'm going to color this horn. Then I'm going to show you how we're going to mount this on the wall. Just kind of a cool look, something a little bit different. Uh, just a fun hobby if you ever find a broken skull or maybe you and a buddy found one you can cut it right in half and each of you share it kind of a memento of your time together in the mountain I have always used the same method for coloring horns don't just take my advice only on coloring horns there's some great products out there but I use a color called Provincial from Minwax and I brush it on real nice and easy Make sure you hold the skull upside down in case your stain ever runs. You don't want it to hit the skull. Once it's on there, it's forever. So I just kind of real slowly touch and brush. And then as soon as I got everywhere I want it to get, I take a paper towel and I dry it. It gives it a more natural look. And then the real delicate stuff around the pedicle, I'll take and I'll use a brush to make sure I get color in there and then I dab it with a q-tip and try to get it in those little tight places and real quick one more time it is minwax wood stain in the color provincial that's the color that matches my region the best we've stained up that horn we've mop and glowed the skull now we just need to let everything dry and then I'm going to show you how to mount this to the wall we're going to epoxy a piece of wood in here and then that's going to be our finished project so just a cool way to do it, just a, another fun little project. I use whatever scrap lumber I got laying around. So this is just a piece of half inch plywood. I lay the skull over it and I do an outside outline. What I want it to do is I want it to recess into the brain hole. So I just take a real rough dimension with a pen and look at it in the distance that I think it should be changed. Then I fire up the sander and I literally just start sanding and moving it until I get it to where it fits right in the brain hole. With a good flush fit, I'll paint that piece of wood on the inside skull side white, just in case there's a hole or something where I would see wood from the inside. The next part, I hate to see a hole as I'm looking at a skull, like where the nasal cavity was popped out from the top. So I'm going to patch up a little of this nasal cavity with some of the stuff that I saved. Then I'll mix up a batch of Bondo and I'll just squish it in there and let it set. Once it's dry, I sand the whole back of that skull so it's nice and smooth and flush with the wall. And then I go to set in the bracket. All right, just wrapping up our half project. You can't really see it very well, but I've just lightened these tips a little bit with a little sandpaper, make them look a little more natural. 
And then as you saw, I bonded that piece of wood in and then put the bracket on just so it's at the right angle. I want it to be nose down. And I filled in that uh, nasal cavity. There was a few places where the nasal had popped out. I don't like seeing through a skull. Um, anyway, here's what it looks like on the wall. And you can pivot it because it's weighted with the horn this way, it's holding against the front. So literally anywhere you want to put it. Sorry for that nails on the chalkboard sound. But with a huge trend in rustic decor these days, that's kind of a neat way to put something on the wall and um, maybe a place for your wife to hang her jewelry or I don't know, maybe put it in the garage and hang duck calls or predator calls or something off a lanyard on it. Or maybe just a fun looking accent piece. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Till next time.